what you've seen? Everyone has different strategies and different exit strategies. We've seen some people who are looking to get like a pack of a hundred of them, right? We have a student okay. in Colorado who is on number 26 right now. So they mm -hmm. want to have a hundred. They're going to package them up and sell them to the hedge funds, right? And they'll have a nice yep. cash house. And you're asking like, what do we do about is you sign a contract with someone? So real quick, before you did that, did you... more than 30 years i got my real estate license in the um, and your your origin story is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna use that kuka you know I, i'm a little more strict with what i'm i'm looking at uh Yeah, so we have the three homes and then we have the five other businesses. And the main one that I focus on is Residential Assisted Living Academy, where we teach and train real estate investors and entrepreneurs how to start, own, and operate their own assisted living homes. So we host trainings about eight times a year in Phoenix, Arizona, and we have an okay. online course and we're teaching thousands of students each year how to do this all on their own. And so it's not a franchise, it's just an educational course, but I find a lot of joy in doing that. And that takes up most of my time. That's awesome. Now for anybody who is interested or at least want to look it up, we did include the link in the description, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on our YouTube channel, um, go down to the description, you'll see the link there. So we did include that um, just after your bio. So um, so check it out. I highly, highly recommend, I uh, highly recommend you for any of this because everybody that I've talked to that has, that has dealt with you has said nothing but great things. Oh, so, I appreciate that. um, so tell me a little bit about how did you come up with this course and, um, and then like, what, what drove you to do that? I guess you, I guess I would ask, ask that more. So what yeah. drove you to do the course? So as a family business, you know, my dad had been an educator for about 30 years prior to starting assisted living. He taught people about all sorts of different investment strategies. And when he jumped into residential assisted living, everyone around him started asking, you know, well, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't get it. You're making all this cash flow and you're only doing one thing. What's going on? Teach me all the secrets. So December yeah. of 2013, which is we're almost coming up on our 10 year, right? In December. Yeah. Yeah three day training to teach um, some people how to do that. And it just went crazy from there. So um, we I've, I've taken over that training from him right since he passed. And so I'm mm -hmm. thrilled to be able to carry on that legacy and continue to teach investors how to do good and do well. That's awesome. And, you know, it, it, that's the reason we're doing this is I, I started this podcast um, to help actually originally help my Facebook group stand out more. So from, because there's a ton of Facebook groups out there. So, um, and we have about 5,300 people roughly in our Facebook group and it's growing every day. So, um, you know, by, I figured at the same time last year around October, around this time, um, I'm like, well, I might as well start posting on YouTube as well. So we're starting to grow that as well. Awesome. You know, um, but, you know, I understand what the educational and it just to me, and I'm sure you feel the same way. It just, it, it brings joy to me when I see somebody else succeed mm, yeah. through what they learn from me, yeah. you know? Um, so it's, it, it, it's crazy on that. Now, what is your, now I, you don't have to give everything away or anything like that. You go take the course, but what is your guys' secret um, to success versus, say, other assisted living places or anything like that? So, um, you know, versus is it American Homes, I, I believe, is one of them. Um, that's like the big chain. Oh, uh, not necessarily for assisted living. They may be. No. Okay. Um, yeah, there's there's no um, there's no big change when it comes to residential. Oh, okay living actually and we're not even because we're not a franchise so we're not gotcha. okay that everyone's under one 
Um, but I think that the big secret to opening an amazing residential assisted living home is um, having grit. Honestly, it takes a lot mm. to get the homes up and running. And each one is its full own individual business. And, you know, you've got to right. hire the staff and get licensed, deal with zoning and fire suppression and all of this stuff, maybe angry neighbors and then market the yeah. home fill the home and you're constantly working on filling the home and making sure that, you know, you have the right staff in place and the right residents there. And so it is a lot of work. And I think all of real estate investing takes grit, but specifically residential assisted living does because mm -hmm. you've got to be willing to get punched in the face and get back up. <laughs> and that's, that's what it is yeah. at the end of the day. And so if that is like the type of person that you are, you know, for any mm -hmm. of your listeners, then this might be an amazing adventure for you because it's one way to really cash flow significantly, but also utilize that skill. Like it's not fun to live an easy life. Like that's boring. No one wants to die and be like, life was super easy. I had no challenges. Nothing was hard, you know? So this is kind of something that can, it's difficult. It can be hard. And I don't tell anybody that, you know, it's get rich quick or super easy. It's definitely can be challenging. Oh, 100%. So um, one of the, the our main, um, our caption was how to make millions in senior housing. So that was, oh. that was my, uh, my YouTube, my uh, thumbnail. I love know? it. Um, and in my opinion, it's great, you know, from what everything that you're describing to me and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's great. You got to This is not a, you know, had like set it and forget it type thing. You know, right. this is a, this is a true business and anybody who tells you even with buy and hold housing, you know, like right residential housing, it's never a set of, everybody says, Oh, it's passive income. I want this passive income. This term passive income has come so much and it's everybody wants to be sitting on the beach and mm -hmm. smoking a cigar, drinking, drinking booze and doing all that uh, and just collect the paycheck. And it's like in a business, in a true business, you got to keep working at it no matter what. Even if you set up systems and it, and it sounds to me like that's exactly what you do is you set up systems yeah. for everything. Yeah. You know, you still got to put in the, the oversight. Yes. You know, yes. you still got to have that oversight no matter what. You know, yeah. so, um, so with your, your course, does it go over how to purchase the home or what to look for in a home? What, what's, so tell me what's good for a senior living, a senior assisted living home. What's yeah. the, what's the idea? You're looking for zoning really is the number one thing that you're looking for. Okay. And when I say that, what I mean is you want residentially zoned homes in a demographic zone where the average age is 50 to 70 year olds who are upper middle class who are making twice the median income. So that's okay. the adult child, right, who mm -hmm. can afford to put mom or dad into your home. So we want to be in a residentially zoned area in a single family neighborhood. And when I say single family, I do not mean a three, two, right? Uh, yep. it, it, Eight, six is also still a residential single family home. So, yep. you know, think large, think upscale in a really nice part of town. That's what we're mm -hmm. going for, where that demographic zone around is filled with the daughter Judy's, right? The adult children yeah. who are going to pay for mom or dad to come in your home. And that's really what you're looking for. Okay. So with that being said, you know, you have residential homes, the more bedrooms, the better. But yeah. we have sometimes two, three stories. Is that good for assisting li assisted living or you is it better it for a ranch? Elevator. Yeah, you have to put in an elevator so you can do it. Okay. Nothing's stopping you, right? But it's right. just going to cost you 30 to 50 grand for that residential elevator. Okay. So these are the things that they have to look in into. So for instance, if you're buying a eight bedroom house with, you know, eight bathrooms or whatever the case may be, and it's a three-story house, you got to make sure that there's an either there's room to put an elevator or um, there's some some sort of elevator there. Yeah, right. most homes will not be ready to go as is. You're going to have to do right. quite a bit of renovation to get them suitable for the seniors. 
whether that's adding bedrooms, bathrooms, ramps, guardrails, handrails, fire suppression, elevators, water tanks, you name it. There's tons of stuff you have to do to get it ready to go for the seniors. Okay. So it's best to try to find a fixer upper no matter what, because you got to make those changes anyways. Maybe because if it's not in that right area, then yeah. they know. Right. And so, well, yeah, well, there's fixer uppers everywhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, it depends. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you can find it in that right area, then that could work perfect. So for everyone out there listening, okay. Coming to you, everyone out there who's watching, listening, go with a wholesaler, look at a wholesaler. That's not me saying that because I'm a wholesaler, but look at your options. You will be able to find those type, but you got to be specific on your criteria, no matter what. So, uh, all right. Now I said that, but <laughs> it's the truth though. It's, you got to be specific on your criteria on what you're looking for so that wholesalers and other, other, um, say, um, investor friendly realtors, because I'll also go with that, uh, know exactly what you're looking for. So when something either comes up with them, they know it right away mm -hmm. and they'll call you versus it going up on the market. Yeah. You know? Um, so typically do you see, uh, the resale value of these businesses? So say somebody brings up these businesses where they're making a good cash flow, 10,000, uh, usually number $10,000 a month. And then do they just maybe try to exit the business and try to sell the business itself? Or, uh, have you seen it where they just try to run it and, and try to pick up more, you know, I mean, I'm. I'm just curious on your opinion on that, what you've seen. Everyone has different strategies and different exit strategies. We've seen some people who are looking to get like a pack of a hundred of them, right? We have a student okay. in Colorado who is on number 26 right now. So they mm -hmm. want to have a hundred. They're going to package them up and sell them to the hedge funds, right? And they'll have a nice yep. cash out. So some students choose to go that route. Others, okay. they really wanted them and they got into it like for the same reason that me and my family members did was they had a loved one who needed this. So they want it for their own family to have a place to live and a place to go. And that's why yeah. they're in this business is so that their grandparents have it, their parents have it, they have it. They're leaving their children a blessing, not a burden. And so they want it to mm -hmm. be like a generational business that's in their family. Um, right. Very rarely are people building them just to sell unless they're going the hedge fund route, but it's not, mm -hmm. not really that one-off type situation like that. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room 